Today, I delve into the mechanical evolutions of the BMW N63 Hot V8 by turbo engine. I only highlight the most consequential changes in six areas from the original 2008 N63 to its three subsequent updates in 2012, 2016, and 2018. The original N63 has an aluso crankcase with double main bearing bolting and additional sidewall bolting. The main bearings measure 65 mm in diameter, a reduction from 70 in the N62. With the N63 TU, BMW modified the rotating assembly completely with a forged crankshaft, forged conrod, and new cast piston with optimized crown shape. These changes accompanied a decent bump in power output. With the N63 TU2, BMW further added IROX anti-friction coating on the top bearing shelves for the Conrad. This is the same material that I have mentioned in previous articles, including on the N64 TU. As it is with the N74 TU, the N63 TU2 also received modified pistons with double the oil drains and an additional oil groove. These updates should cut oil consumption. BMW also increased the compression ratio. With the N63 B44 T3, which is the high output version of the N63 TU3, BMW replaced the Aluso process with electric arc wire spraying to manufacture the, uh, the crankcase. Naturally, this version uses a different coating on the piston skirts to work with the new ball surface. The N63 TU3 also uses IROX coating on the main bearing shells. The high put version uh, N63 B44 T3 now uses the Conrad of the S63 T4, while the low output N63 B44 M3 uses the Conrad of the S63 T2. On the original N63, the exhaust valve lift curve on um, cylinders 2, 4, 7, and 8 were different. They open later and have a shorter duration and a lower lift. BMW said that this improves engine smoothness. With the N63 TU, BMW completely redesigned the cylinder head to work with the third generation Valvetronic, which was introduced with the N55. Vanos and uh, timing setup are updated to work with the system. BMW also updated the head cover to work with the modified crankcase ventilation system with the goal of reducing oil consumption. With the N62, uh, N63 TU2, BMW again modified the crankcase ventilation system and the head cover. The cylinder head also uh, was also modified with partial integration of the intake runners. The head gasket has been re-improved too. BMW also updated the material of the valve guides as well as the valve stems, obviously in an attempt to curb oil consumption. With the N63 TU3, BMW tweaked the head cover, cylinder head, and head gasket once again. The original N63 used a pendulum slide cell positive displacement pump driven by a chain off the rear of the engine. With the N63 TU, BMW made the pump smaller, ostensibly to improve efficiency. With the N63 TU2, BMW added characteristic map control and an oil pressure sensor. It works in the same way as found in the N74 TU, which I have detailed previously. It seeks to save fuel by reducing oil pressure. When it comes to cooling, BMW included the two engine control units in the low temperature coolant circuit with the N63 TU, as it is on the N74 TU. With the N63 TU2, BMW heavily modified the coolant circuit and added a characteristic map dependent water pump. While previously the crankcase was continually cooled in what BMW calls longitudinal distribution, the N63 TU2 employs the split cooling combined concept, wherein during the warm up phase, 90% of the coolant is bypassed in what BMW calls parallel configuration. 
This speeds up the warm-up process and saves fuel. The original N63 was the first modern hot V8 by turbo engine. Most of its troubles come directly or indirectly from this architecture. With the N63TU, BMW updated the turbochargers and removed the blow-off valves. BMW said that blow-off valves are not needed with Valvetronic. With the N63TU2, BMW modified the exhaust manifolds and updated the turbochargers to twin squirrel units. The pneumatic wastegate, wastegate valves were replaced by electric wastegates. At the same time, the exhaust flaps were also updated from pneumatic to uh, electric actuators. Like it is with the N74TU, this greatly simplifies the vacuum system. Originally, the pneumatic wastegate and exhaust flap actuators got vacuum from the vacuum reservoir hidden inside the hot V, a design that further undermined the engine's reliability. From the N63TU2, only the brake booster is driven by the vacuum pump directly. With the N63TU3, BMW added overboost function to the low output N63B44M3. More interestingly, the high output N63B44T3 received electric blow off valves. It appears that these are not as useless as BMW formerly said anyway. BMW also added a bypass line between the charge air coolers, which improves torque, throttle response, and acoustics. The original N63 used BMW's high precision injection HPI system. It used piezoelectric injectors just like on the N54 and N74. With the N63TU, BMW moved to high pressure injection HDE with solenoid valve injectors, as found in the N55 and uh, N74TU. With the N63TU3, BMW increased the fuel system pressure from 200 bar to 350 bar. This improves fuel atomization. What originally made the N63 the worst modern V8 was BMW's courageous choice to put the turbochargers in the valley of the engine. This created all sorts of heat-related issues that ranged from heat stress on the rotating assembly, excessive oil consumption, overheating, pre-ignition, and turbo failures. PSO electric fuel injectors did not help either. Over time, BMW attempted to cure these issues, and by all accounts, the latest N63TU3 is one of the better hot V engines in production. However, there is no fix for a bad architecture, and even the latest N63TU3 is not as reliable or as durable as non-hot V designs.